Right, so hey guys, and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So as promised in the last tutorial, this tutorial is going to take you through the new way of how you use multiprocessing to pretty much run a function multiple times um, at the same time. So instead of having to run a function in a synchronous method, which is one, one after the other instruction, we're just going to be running it at one time. So it's going to help us save a lot of time. So if you haven't already watched part one of these this tutorial, which is a using multiprocessing in Python for beginners, it's going to be linked in the de description. So I recommend you go ahead and watch that first. If you already know how multiprocessing works and are just curious about another method of how you can implement it, you can carry on watching. So first of all, what I'm going to do is go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code. Um, and then what I'm going to do in here is create a new file and then save this as uh, new malt.py. You can call it whatever you like as long as you have a .py extension which is a Python file. So I'm going to save it on my desktop and then let's start coding. So first off I'm going to zoom in a bit so it's easier for you guys to see. And what I'm going to do first is instead of doing import multiprocessing, we're going to do import concurrent.futures. Uh, futures. Cool. So this is the module um, that we're going to be using. It's called concurrent and then the futures class is the bit that we're going to be using. So what we want to do after that is also import time so that we can track the total time of execution for this program so that we see whether we're actually saving any time or not. So first of what I want to do is actually go ahead and create a function that's going to sleep for a bit. So quite literally it's going to sleep for a bit. And then in there I'm going to pass an argument of how many seconds I want it to sleep for. Now I'm going to print an f string, which is going to say um, sleeping, and then it's going to display how many seconds the user has asked it to sleep, and then it's just going to say second bracket s, Oops. second bracket s. Cool. And then we need to use the time dot sleep, and then use seconds, whichever amount of seconds the user passes through, and then lastly we just return. We say done sleeping. Now, as you may have already noticed in the last tutorial, we had done print done sleeping, but in this one, we're actually going to be using done sleeping because um, after the program or the function has eg been executed using our concurrent um, pull executor that we're going to create in a second after it's pretty much done executing this in at the same time, what it's going to go ahead and do is um, it's actually going to return the result of the function. So whatever the function returns. So that's why we're using a return. Cool. So what we want to do is type in with concurrent dot futures dot um, process pool executor, which is kind of like an object that um, acts as a queue or holds all the functions that you want to run at the same time. And we type in as executor so that we can just call it executor without having to call it this entire name here. We can just call it executor the next time we need it. Now, as before as well, we need to use the if name method because that's required as standard when we're using multiprocessing. And then we do colon and let's create a, um, a variable called F1, which is going to pretty much um, store the object that we need. So we're going to do executor which is the object we created a second ago dot submit um, and then in the executor we can submit our function which is called um, sleep for a bit and then we can pass in our argument which is going to be how many seconds we want it to sleep i'm going to ask it to sleep for let's say one second cool and then once we're done we can just print f1 dot oops f1 dot results which is pretty much the result that's going to be returned so that's whatever value is being returned by the function so this this um in this example it's just going to say done sleeping cool so what i want to do next is go ahead and create a finish variable here finish equals time dot perf counter which is pretty much going to count how long this um, program took to execute and then we're going to say print finished in time and then comma finish. So this is going to tell us how long the entire program took to execute. So what we want to actually prove here is if we were to fun run this function called sleep for a bit twice, um, it would have taken a total time of two seconds and a little bit more. 
but if we run it using multi-processing it should technically run in one second and a few more decimal places. So if I want to run that again I'm going to just call this f2 and then equals that to executor dot submit and then sleep for a bit comma one because I want it to sleep for one second again and then we're just going to do print f2 dot result because it's going to return done sleeping too. So now that I've got all of this done, I'm going to go ahead and run this program to actually see if it's worked how I want it to work. So as you see right here, it says it has finished in time and then it says one second and a bit more. Obviously, as I said, it's going to have one second and a few more decimal places because it needs to do the imports and run the other instructions that we have apart from the function running twice. Now, if it didn't work properly, we would have got a finish time of two seconds and a bit more because technically uh, sleep for a bit function, which is being run twice, by the way, is sleeping for one second each. So if it was being run in our normal way, which is asynchronous type, it would have taken two seconds because um, the time.sleep itself takes a second. So that running twice is two seconds and it would have a few more decimal places for the other instructions to be run. Also, if you notice, we have um, the value that is being returned by a function, which is called sleeping once, um, which is, what was it called? Let's see. It should have been called done sleeping, I'm thinking. Let me go and check. Yeah, so it should have been called done sleeping. Let me go ahead and check if that actually shows up. So let's run this up. And do we have it here? So finished in time finishing time it just prints out the time then it says sleeping one second okay for some reason it hasn't showed up but let's see why that is so if I get rid of this for now let's get rid of that oh it's because basically the f1 dot result is meant to be a function so we need to use the two brackets right there so that it's a call to the function, otherwise it won't work. So make sure you have f1.result with two um, brackets, so opening and closing bracket. Hopefully it works this time. Let's go ahead and see. And as you see right here, once it's done executing the two functions, it says done sleeping, which is the result of the function. So after everything is done, it returns done sleeping and hence um, the pull executor or the um, process pull executor takes the result from the function and then prints it up twice because we're using two pool executors in this case using the dot result to find out what the function returned and then lastly we have a little line that says how long this whole program took to um, run which is the correct time because it's one second and a bit more anyway guys that was it for today's tutorial i just wanted to make it short and just show you guys the most recent method of how people are using the multi-processing um, module to run um, two different functions or one function multiple times um, at the same pretty much time by saving a lot of time. So this approach is usually used when you have to do a lot of processing and um, you use the same function with different um, parameters to like calculate different values. So it might sound a bit complicated but if you're looking up a tutorial for this you probably know what you want to use this module for anyway. So I hope I was able to help you guys understand how this works. If you guys feel like you have learned something new from this video, please do make sure to drop it in the comments as I would understand that I was able to explain it properly. If you guys would like to donate to the channel, you can do so by either signing up as a patron using the Patreon link in the description or purchasing a super chat emoji or a highlighted message when this video premieres. Anyway guys, like always, also make sure to share the video, follow up the socials and join the Discord for a lot of fun. And I will see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace.